also creativity and it was also coming from a strong point of view. I, I think you'll know in advertising that any of these statistics are, are uh, wildly successful. In terms of co collaboration, you know, look at the digital uh, music uh, industry, for example. This collaboration is so strong today that it wasn't a company, it wasn't iTunes that created this industry. It was really you and I making a demand that we no longer wanted to buy CDs if we could download them on our computer. So the power of the consumer um, is huge today in R&D, in communications, in making improvements to brand, not only in uh, how we use them, but also how they impact our society. The third fun fundamental C you want to talk about is creativity. Um, over the past few years, our industry has been having a furious fight within itself about whether right brain trumps uh, you know, left brain or vice versa, and really it is a balance of it, because um, there's no real one model today. Uh, actually the model today is there is no model in how you do communications. Um, creativities and great ideas have always been at the forefront of motiva motivating people. Uh, it, uh, it is with us when it makes us smile, makes us laugh, and changes the way we think. Really, creativity is universal regardless of the media in which it exists, and creativity influences swarms by interesting ideas and provocative thinking. An example of this uh, comes from DDB Australia working with the National Association for the Prevention of Child Abuse, and it was a campaign called Children See and Children Do. Um, a very dour uh, little piece I'm going to show you, but I, I promise to uh, elevate you with a fun one right after. So a very basic one. Children do, uh, children do see, and they um, or see and do. And we needed to um, communicate to parents that uh, and adults that they needed to be better role models. Campaign has made significant difference uh, in Australia and has actually been rolled out to other countries using that same sort of communication uh, and that positioning. So creativity can also generate swarms through laughter. And we're going to move away to, from that to laughter. Uh, a good example is a company we work with called Central Beheer, a small uh, Netherlands and based insurance company uh, that under uh, normal cir circumstances would hardly be known uh, locally, let alone globally. Um, but uh, one particular spot uh, got a lot of attention for it and it became a series of things. So here's a fun little bit from Central Beheer. เลือดตึงเจ้าโคเลือดตึงเจ้าโคว่าถอยเลือดเหม่งมึงเหล่าเซ่ว่าเลือดเจ้าวะเออว่าถอยเลือดเลือดเหม่งเจ้าว่าละ
It's always a what would you do in that circumstance. Uh, a good fun one that's, that's gone on um, a, a lot virally and, and given them a lot more attention. I've got a few more examples, but I'm going to skip through uh, the next couple um, just for the interest of time and getting to something that I really want to speak about at the end. But this is a good one, too. Uh, we've had a great relationship with Anheuser-Busch, now bought by InBev, so it's uh, AB InBev. Uh, but this one has transcended media channels and created a swarm of its own. Um, a big part of our long relationship has uh, revolved around reinforcing Bud's strong brand identity. Um, and we did something with them in 2007 in the Web 2.0 era of that time, uh, which was creating kind of an edgy piece that couldn't uh, be put on, nor on TV. Um, but anyway, just take a look. It's called Swear Jar. You may have seen it. What's that? That's a swear jar. Every time someone swears, you put a quarter in it. Who gets the money? I don't know. We'll use it to buy something for the office, like a case of Bud Light or something. Fucking awesome. F*** you, Bob. <laughs> F*** you, Jim. Eric, I have a bag in line three for you. Can I borrow your pen? Can I borrow your f***ing pen? Will the owner of a white station wagon please go f*** yourself? We're gonna go down there and we're gonna f*** some We're gonna f*** some We're gonna We're gonna f*** some Poop. Doesn't count. Shut the f*** up! I am so proud of you mother suckers. Here, here. So a little edgier, obviously, couldn't be shown on uh, regular TV. Uh, it went on to win an Emmy and has uh, seen over, I think, 13 million views now. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting how you can m ignite and motivate the swarm, both with you know, uh, strong messages and, and creative and fun messages. Now, uh, Peter Bishop once said something that seems very relevant today. You can't predict the future, but you can arrive there a little less surprised. Uh, and so hopefully this presentation has an attempt to answer all your questions because we would be lying if we knew, uh, if we said we had all the answers. But if you want to cut down on the surprises of tomorrow, I believe there's some things we should all be doing right now. Uh, for one, we need to make a major change in the way we look at our consumer audiences. Uh, in the past, most marketing uh, tried to understand and isolate the individual. That's sort of plucking people out from mass. Today, we increasingly need to understand and motivate communities, uh, how they interact and how ideas and behavior are, are transmitted. And we at, agency, at our agency, we believe we need to find some people with new skills. Um, and we've created actually a new position within DDB and it resides in about four of our, our major offices. And we call it the chief community officer, someone who really knows this online media stuff, someone who really knows uh, the behavior of people. And that's not to say that our creatives don't or our planners don't, but it's someone who can think about communities in the aggregate uh, and really see how they move, how they form and how they disperse. Uh, and it's really to avoid the following sort of video thing happening where you see an agency finding itself on, on the very early stages of irrelevance.